This is a mains voltage LED GU10 lamp from Pound World. Now, Pound World in the UK are the sort of nemesis of uh, Poundland. It's a different chain and they have a similar stuff, but they also have some interestingly different products. And one of them is their LED GU10 lamp. Um, they've not uh, got quite as far as Poundland in offering the 3 watt type version, but they've got this standard uh, sort of this 12 LED warm white version. And like most of these glass uh, GU10 lamps, it's very hard to open without smashing everything to bits. So um, I smashed another one to bits and it really, you know, I tried prizing the top out and then it broke and finally got the circuit board out. And strangely, it, it was kind of resined in inside and it, it was very sticky as if the resin hadn't quite cured as well. Pretty, bleh, bit yucky really. But uh, here we have it. It's using the nice simple um, construction of, almost like a traditional LED lamp construction, of the through-hole circuit board with the 5mm LEDs, warm white, which is nice. And on the back, they've got little island pads with the components, the mains power supply components tacked across. So um, I've, I'll, first of all, I'm going to give you a close-up of the back of this, showing the little um, bridge rectifier tucked away under here, uh, the smoothing capacitor, um, the current limiting capacitor, and then a little inline resistor here. So um, I've reverse engineered this circuit board. And this is what it looks like. You've got the mains coming in onto a pad here. It's very clear that they also had the option to put another resistor either in as a, as a fuse or just to limit inrush current, but they haven't used that option. So they've tacked the lead directly on here. Let's uh, get this round the same orientation. So they've tacked uh, one of the mains leads in directly on the end of this capacitor. The capacitor sits across this pad and that pad and also has a, very hard to see, but a one mega ohm discharge resistor across it, a surface mount discharge resistor. It's clear that this was also designed for universal voltage, because if they want to put a bigger capacitor in, um, they can actually go onto this further out pad. I'm not 100% sure if that's what it's for, but it looks as though it is designed. Actually, now I look at this, the outline of the capacitor here uh, on the screen print does show a leg going to that pad, so it, it's designed to take wider capacitors too, maybe just for the different, uh, maybe they were just leaving their options open for capacitor sizes. So it's limited by the capacitor, it then goes through this little bridge rectifier here, which is just a little surface mount bridge rectifier, and is tacked onto the board here, on these four pads, and then the neutral goes to the other leg of that, and the output has a 150k resistor and the electrolytic capacitor tacked directly across it um, on the pads and the output of the rectifier. The positive then goes through that LED, then that LED, and it just basically works its way through the whole board, going through a 10 ohm resistor here, and then finds its way back to the negative of the rectifier. So um, if I uh, doodle this schematic down now, That was for the candy floss machine the schematic. So to reverse engineer that, um, it was going... Live was coming in, very standard schematic. It was going through the capacitor, uh, which is 270 nanofarad at 400 volt. So properly rated. It had a discharge resistor across it of 1 mega ohm. That goes into a bridge rectifier, I'll draw it quite big here. Uh, the neutral goes straight into the bridge rectifier. Uh, and the output um, has the electrolytic capacitor across it, plus, minus, which is rated Three point three microfarad at four hundred volt, and also across the output is a discharge resistor. Probably more to um, 
more for stopping the lamps glowing when the, they're switched off at the wall, this, any slight leakage current, that'll clamp that down, and that's 150k. And it's only going to see the voltage across LEDs across it. Then there are basically 12, I'm not going to draw them all, LEDs interrupted about midway through with the resistor. The resistor can go anywhere. Um, and it's unusual, uh, so many of the Chinese lamps don't even bother with that resistor anymore. Particularly when they're coming through and charging capacitor up. But it's good, it, it, it reduces the ripple very slightly. And this uh, doesn't seem to have much in the way of flicker at all, this lamp is quite good. So that's 10 ohm. So that's the circuit, it's very stereotypical of a of an LED lamp, it's a nice enough lamp. The, if you work out the capacitive reactance of the capacitor here, it comes to about 12k, and when you deduct uh, the combined forward voltage of all the LEDs, 12 of them, about 36 volts in the mains, the, and work out the current, it's going to be in the region of about uh, 18 to 20 milliamps. So that's well within the rate, rating of these LEDs. And it's not in, engineered as a very high power lamp, it's just basically um, it's, uh, they say 0.72 watts, so it actually puts out a modest amount of light, it, it does, projects it pretty much as a beam, and it's a useful amount of light, and the colour's nice, um, but um, yeah, it is really just a sort of low-level decoration, um, or ambient illumination lamp, but uh, other, you know, other than that, you know, it's, it's actually very nice, I quite like this lamp.